day there everyone my name is Cliff I'm a gem cutter from Australia and in today's video we'll be talking about cubic zirconia the pros and cons so this video comes about because of a comment by Joey Giordano 9132 thank you Joey for your comment now Joey left this comment on another video I made about pros and cons on topaz faceting so why not? Let's make one of our cubic zirconia. He also talks about some of the cons, how to work around commonly cut gems. So we might talk about that on one of the gems I'm cutting. So thank you, Joey, and let's continue this video. So first up, let's have a close look at my personal stash of this man-made synthetic gem that we all call cubic zirconia. Now cubic zirconia, by the way, should not be confused with a natural gem called zircon. So what you see here are many kilos of cubic zirconia that I've bought over a period of over 10 years. And I don't buy this all at once, I buy it off and on. I see colours that I like or colours that are in special. And they're bought mainly off the platforms called Alibaba or AliExpress. And all of this cubic zirconia is manufactured in China. So as you can see my method of storing this product is not too elegant. It basically just gets stored in some of the boxes that they arrive in. So I guess the question that some of you will be asking for those who don't facet gems is well what is cubic zirconia? So cubic zirconia was initially commercially produced as a diamond simulant. To us as gem cutters, we like to refer to it as CZ, as an abbreviation, but it's a low cost alternative to cutting diamonds, has a high durability and it has a high refractive index. So as mentioned earlier on, the majority of CZ or cubic zirconia is manufactured in China and Russia. So let's get into discussing the pros and cons of cubic zirconia. And while I'm doing that, we'll start with the pros. But meanwhile, you can watch me facet this particular design called Moon Glow by a well-known gem cutter called Jeff Graham. Now, this design called Moon Glow is an eye design or a navette, and you can find it online. And it's a difficult design. So if you're a beginner, I would probably avoid it. But let's have a look at this design and let's talk about cubic zirconia, the pros. So when it comes to cubic zirconia, the most obvious pro would have to be that it's the most inexpensive fastening material available. So when I first started buying cubic zirconia about 10 years ago, the average price per kilo rounded out would have been about $25 Australian and that would have been say $12 for say a cheap clear quartz or $40 for say a, a canary color so there's a bit of a variation from color to color and then the postage costs average around about $12 to $15 depending on whom you bought it from but let's say post COVID uh, the price has more than quadrupled and the price of postage for that matter has probably tripled since then it's pretty expensive the postage so the price is going up more and more but overall you should be able to buy for 100 to 125 dollars a kilo the cheaper varieties of cubic zirconia may be less in some cases so it's still a fairly cheap fastening material for those who want to you know learn how to fasten so the color of the cubic zirconia that I'm faceting in this video is called Padparadasha and I bought it from Aliexpress for $42.88 Australian and then the rest of it was in postage and it came to a total of $61.21 for 200 grams so you're going to facet quite a few gems from a 200 gram piece of cubic zirconia. So one of the bonuses is that it is low in price point. So just a quick look at the gem at the moment and I've just completed cutting the pavilion facets and I've cut the girdle facets but I still need to polish the outline of the girdle facets. 
So going back to some of the pros when it comes to cubic zirconia, the next obvious pro would have to be the variety of colour. Without a doubt, there is no other fastening material available that can offer the amount of colours that cubic zirconia has. So as a gem cutter, the colours are literally unlimited. There is a myriad of colours that will suit everybody's taste. Also, I should mention when it comes to the manufacturing of cubic zirconia, usually every year or so there is a new colour available on the market. So recently I just purchased a colour called Mars Red because I like reds. So the list goes on and on. So one of the big pros when it comes to faceting cubic zirconia, you're not dealing with a piece of rough material that is full of cracks and inclusions. It is the gem cutter's nightmare when you buy a piece of rough material and you've spent a lot of money on a piece of gem only to find that it's full of cracks and then when you go to facet that gem, the gem will ultimately fall apart during the faceting process. Now, it is just one of those things that you do not have to deal with when you're faceting cubic zirconia. So one of the benefits of faceting cubic zirconia is that it also has a high refractive index, which for the layman means that the output or the bling or the scintillation of the gem will be exceedingly high compared to that of quartz or even topaz. And because of that high refractive index, it gives it that diamond-like appearance. More than often, with gems that have a high refractive index, you also have a very low critical angle. In the case of cubic zirconia, the critical angle is around about 28 degrees. So this means that you don't need to be faceting a gem with a lot of depth. But also, if you make a mistake, and you need to lower the angle of the gem, whether it's on the pavilion or even the crown, you can. You can actually start adapting that gem or cutting on the fly or on the run, and you'll still have plenty of material to work with, which is not the case with a lot of other gems that are out there. So last but not least, I would like to consider the final pro as durability. With a Mohs hardness of 8.5 out of 10, Cubic zirconia rates quite high compared to most other gems out there. So for example, if diamond is at 10 out of 10, making it the hardest gem on the planet, um, is it as durable as diamond? Of course not. <laughs> not, not, not near it. It's not near as durable as sapphire, but compared to an emerald or a topaz or a piece of quartz, um, it's going to outlast those gems in terms of durability. So for example, if you're wearing it in a ring and you accidentally bang it up against the side of a wall, it's not likely to chip or scratch. Whereas a piece of quartz or an emerald would be pretty prone to scratching and chipping under duress. So this makes this a quite a practical gem compared to many others out there. So now we're going to look at some of the cons associated with cubic zirconia. And I guess we need to address the elephant in the room because the biggest question associated with cubic zirconia with gem cutters and people interested in gems or people buying gems is the fact, is cubic zirconia a gem? So this boils down to the question of a earth mine gem versus a man-made gem. And you could put it into the context of the difference between a flower and a weed. And that would be judgment. So my take on the subject is this. That cubic zirconia, just like a diamond, is naturally formed in nature. And taking the conditions of nature and putting it into a laboratory and then manufacturing that product to be exactly the same as a natural product, in my opinion, does make it a gem, although it is man-made. Although if we were to say manufacture a gem from an element that was non-existent 
in a laboratory maybe then you could say it's no longer a gem it's a really interesting topic and quite controversial amongst gem cutters so I'm quite interested to hear what your viewpoint is when it comes to synthetic man-made gems what really constitutes a gem as a gem cutter, one of the downsides I've found with cubic zirconia, there are a few colours you should avoid. And one of those colours, in my opinion, is the dark violet. So what I've personally found in my experience as a gem cutter is that some of these darker varieties of cubic zirconia, and particularly this dark violet colour, for whatever reason, it's highly destructive to the polishing laps. So it's leaving contamination in the laps and I don't know why but this colour has done it to me and it's done it to one of the gem cutters in my fastening group. It's leaving particles in the lap and when you go to uh, use the lap again you're just getting scratches on other gems. And also polishing the surface of this dark violet colour leaves scratches on it. It's really hard to polish this variety of colour. And not only that, if you're buying this gem and you like cubic zirconia as a gem, this particular colour, as you can see, doesn't have a lot of light penetration in it either. So one of the downsides you're going to find that if you're buying cubic zirconia in the rough, often it will come in huge chunks now the piece i'm holding at the moment is about a kilo of cubic zirconia cubic zirconia is actually quite a dense gem material it weighs a lot but the problem is also is that often you need to cut it down into smaller pieces so you're going to need a fairly large diamond saw to cut through it not many people will own a, a, a decent sized diamond saw so you're going to have to be part of a gem club or you're going to have to lash out a few dollars to buy a sizable diamond saw to cut through this stuff and it's tough material so it's going to sort of wear down the diamond saw also so one of the cons associated when you're buying cubic zirconia rough online is that what you see in a picture on a website is not what you receive in the parcel so here you see two pieces of what is supposed to be pure clear coloured cubic zirconia however one has a light violet tinge to it this piece I'm holding now and the other larger piece is pure clear so at times you're going to find that some of the colours can be disappointing and some of the sellers that you're buying off will not always provide you exactly what you want so the final con we're going to discuss when it comes to cubic zirconia and I guess there are more cons but we're going to address the question where people say that cubic zirconia is not worth anything particularly in the faceted cup form and I need to answer this question as fairly as possible and I would have to say I agree with them that with most of the designs that you buy that are commercially cut for example like a standard round brilliant or commercial oval cut that you can buy for a few dollars for a six millimeter or seven millimeter gem literally it's not worth anything at all because it's a commercially cut gem often the meat points are very poor the quality of the cut is not very good either so inherently what makes a piece of faceted cubic zirconia valuable is who faceted the gem? Has it been cut by a skillful artisan? Is the quality of the meat points really good? This adds appeal to the gem. Is it a really interesting design and unique? Something that you cannot buy commercially? Is it set in precious metal? This adds to the value of the gem. So just like a oil painting, what gives it value is not the product in it, it's the subject matter and the person who painted it. So we're coming to a conclusion on this video. We also have the final reveal where you get to see the gem that I've been cutting, all fully faceted. But we're going to address the question by Joey Giordano 9132 about cons in certain designs and let's talk about the navette design or the eye design i think they're really both the same navette and eye designs i reckon the most difficult aspect about fastening such designs is cutting the pavilion facets particularly the opposing four facets that meet to a point 
If you do not cut those down to the right depth of equal depth, then you are going to struggle cutting this gem when you facet the crown. None of the meat points on the crown are going to align and that means the table will misalign. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that tip. So it's bye from me and we have the final reveal coming up. Thank you for watching. Take care everyone.